So, as we know, Twilight Princess HD is coming soon to the Wii U, and I am so excited. About the game? Sure. About the HD? Hmm, kind of, I guess. What I'm excited about is Midna Hype! What up everyone, it's the Vori Senpai here, and today we're going to be taking a look at why Midna is the number one reason I'm excited about her appearance in this revamped Twilight Princess. You know, the game that has been out, you know, for a lot of years, and it's been on three, three consecutive Nintendo systems in a row. Must be a big deal. Why is Midna my most favorite Nintendo character? Well, all that and more coming up. Before that, don't forget to hit that like button and comment your reasons if you like her as well. Don't forget to subscribe also. Now then, who is Midna? From my earliest thoughts and memory, going on a limb here, she is the Twilight Princess. Spoilers for those who have yet to witness her in the game. Midna is one of the Twilight, a race descended from wielders of powerful and evil magic. As a Twilight Princess, Midna, however, was overthrown by Zant, one of the Twilight and Observer King. He cursed her and turned her from this into that. Brutal. Now we all know how the story goes. She finds Link, do as I say, dog, as she says, and the whole relationship or development commences and turns to a happily ever after-esque ending, right? Mitna changes her mind about Link, cares for the light world, when initially wanted to save her only her skin and the dark world, and wanted her position back to crush Zant. We all know that. We, we all have known that. So why is she popular among many fans of the game, not just her specifically? Here are five things I think pushed her to the popular little imp favorite she is today. She is realistic. Midna isn't your typical character from other typical characters. She has feelings. Whoa, it's great. She has intense, she has pride, but she also had spunk. She doesn't take much from anybody and won't cower to anybody. Even when she knew she needed Link to help her out, she didn't go, please Link, can you help me? I'm just a little old imp here, you know, but I'm the princess, but you don't know that. Can you just, you know, no. She remained condescending and in high power. But here's where the realism comes in. She knew Link wouldn't know everything about this place, or about his appearance, or why, you know, he's even in this place, this position. So she helped him out, and she told him about the world, she told him everything he needed to know. Her realistic spunk, but then also realistic helpfulness, that's a good quality in characters and in which have been sidelined in recent times. She can fight. Now I'm not saying other sidekicks of Link couldn't fight, <laughs> but Minna helped in a way she did not have to. She could have left it up to Link in wolf form, mind you, to do her dirty work, but no, she assisted him in various mannerisms, such as fighting. She fought alongside Link, which is one reason I believe she is one of the best Zelda characters, in my opinion. One of the best reasons to love a character in their story is their story, or their character development. And boy, did she have a good one. Over time, she grew to like Link more and more, and Zelda as well for how she was sacrificing herself, how she sacrificed her her appearance for Midna. At first she wanted to only save her skin and not care for anybody. Not care for Link, who by the way was the one doing the saving. But she changed her feelings and had compassion to those who helped her on her at first spiteful journey. 
her character development was one of my favorites, especially when she, who played her victims, specifically Link, became the victim and asked Link for help in a way not like her. She didn't have spunk in the same way as the first time they met. She grievingly needed help and it was real. It was not a ploy. Her appearance. Okay, yeah, she looks good too. <laughs> Can't have a bad character looking bad with a good story. Like, that's crazy. Her appearance in the game as first an imp and then her human form was a good Disney-esque feel. You know, like in Disney films, you kiss the frog and it becomes a prince or, you know, all those other stories, but switch it over to Nintendo and they do a similar but opposite effect. Kiss the imp and she becomes a princess. That's crazy. <laughs> Both appearances are good key points to Mitna's storyline progression. It makes sense for her to have a human-like look as princess of her Twilight servants. But her appearance as an imp really took the story to a whole new level and made people be like, oh, yeah, like I didn't know she was just this great princess, like high power. Like, look at that, it's an imp. And then you turn into a princess, like, oh, so she is powerful. And for that reason, her imp appearance resonates with me more. Plus, she's so cute. <laughs> her originality. Who knew Nintendo could pull this off? Could pull off such a grand character? Minna's first appearance was in 2006, and she is still gaining exposure from fans and the company itself. It's almost like Rosalina. When she first appeared in Mario Galaxy, afterwards she was in almost every other Mario game. Wait. Yeah, just about every other Mario game afterwards. The next Zelda game she was in, albeit non-canon, was Hyrule Warriors, and she probably was one of the best characters there. Both forms, I should say. She's not your typical character, as I mentioned before, and Nintendo being the reason she exists still shocks me every day, considering her dark nature, but also light nature. It's very surreal, but it's the exact development that works best for her, Midna. Well, thanks for watching everybody. How did you find Midna? Was she likable to you? Was she... <laughs> was she not? Did I hit any key points you guys agree with? Did I not? Don't forget to subscribe to support me. This has been the Vorti Senpai on Midna. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.